Hi and welcome to this tips and tricks video. My name is Dave Hedeman, the application specialist for the steel segment here at Trimble. And today I want to introduce you to the basics of the template editor. Um, we have talked about the template editor in another video where we imported a DWG file to create a, a custom title block. In this case though, we're gonna be creating a BOM style report, just a simple textual report. Again, just to kind of introduce the concepts of how the template editor thinks so that you can feel a little bit more confident when you wanna go modify an existing report that we already provide or just go ahead and create one from scratch yourself. So first things first, you wanna open the template editor. You wanna go up to your file menu, choose editors, and then template editor. Now when I wanna create a new template or a new report, you'll go to your file menu and choose new. And if you remember from the previous video, we do talk a little bit about the differences between graphical and textual. Graphical is gonna be anything that you wanna have images, lines, colors, fonts, and things like that. Textual is gonna be just a simple text report. So something that's gonna go in a notepad, or if you're making a comma separated value file for feeding into Excel or something like that, uh, textual is good for that too. For simplicity's sake, we're just gonna do textual today. So I'm gonna go ahead and say okay. And here is my basic workspace. Now, if you again recall from the other video, um, you should probably go back and watch. Uh, there are different types of rows that contain different object uh, different types of information. There are uh, header rows and page header rows. We're not gonna focus on those. We're gonna focus on the main row type. So when you click on that, you get the ability to choose from a content type. So uh, what is it that I wanna report? Do I wanna report bolt information? Do I wanna report assembly information or part information? Um, in this case, I'm gonna start with assembly because I wanna give uh, a, an assembly BOM type of uh, report here. So I'll say, yep, let's go ahead and select that, click OK. And here I get the blue basic row. Now the row, you can adjust its height by dragging up and down these middle handles here, um, but you wanna keep it relatively tight. Um, this is the output height. So if you leave it too large, you're gonna get these big gaps between the text when it actually prints into a report. Um, so you wanna keep that pretty snug. Um, but let's go ahead and start adding some information to this. There is the ability to add just raw text, ABC123, um, but we're gonna focus on the intelligent text, the value fields that we can bring in. So I'm gonna click on the value field button, go ahead and click at the beginning of this row, and you can see here's a whole bunch of information about the assembly uh, that I can report. If you scroll down in this list, you're gonna get subfolders as well for additional information beyond the assembly information, things like the main part of the assembly or drawing or user-defined attributes. So there's a lot of stuff in here that I don't really have time for in this video, but definitely you know, feel free to come in here and explore. And this list is going to look different depending on what environment you're in. I'm in the US Imperial environment, so you know this has been localized Per, for US um, uh, customers, different regions are gonna look a little bit different, um, but it's gonna operate on the same basic principles. So here I'm going to choose, I'm gonna start with assembly position, the shipping mark, so I'll say okay, and now I have a line for assembly position. Uh, if you double click on it, you can adjust how many characters there are. If you ever run into a case where a report is being cut off, um, you can adjust the character length. You can set the sort order. Do we want this to be ascending, A1, A2, A3, or do we want it descending, Z1, uh, Z10, Z9, Z8? Um, you, you can adjust some other stuff about this as well, like the, uh, the fonts, if you're in a graphical template, but you can't from a textual, so we're just gonna let that go. So I'm gonna bring in some other information here. I'm gonna bring in things like maybe the name. Um, assembly name is something that's inherited typically from the main part. In the US, at least, we focus a lot on main part information when we're dealing with the assemblies. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose the main part folder and then go down until I find main part name. Um, so that for like a beam that has clips and things like that on it, that's gonna be the name of the main object, you know, the actual wide flange member. So we'll go ahead and bring that in. Um, name, I don't really care if it's sorting or not, but the assembly position is gonna kinda govern because it's there first. If I were to drag main part name up, then main part name would be the, the sorting factor, but I wouldn't wanna do that. And then we'll bring in something like length, right? So we'll do the overall assembly length. Um, you can add all kinds of other information here, but again, we're just keeping it simple. And I'm gonna go ahead and make this row tight to that information. 
So let's save this report. I'm going to save it into the model folder that I'm working on. And I'm just going to save this as a sample BOM report. And I put the plus sign at the beginning of my saved files just because it's easier for me to group them. They all show up at the top of any list. Um, so that's just a little trick. You know, don't have to do that if you don't want to. So I'll go ahead and I'll say OK, and then I'll go back to my Tecla model, and let's go ahead and run that report. So uh, here's my sample BOM report. I'll say create from all. And now here's a list of all of the assemblies. So in order of their piece mark, giving me their name, and then the length of the assembly. So you can see it's that easy to create a quick report to get the information you want. But what if I wanted to include subpart information as well? And that's where you start to get into some of the, the deeper rules and settings of how the template editor works. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to close out of this, go back to my template, uh, and then I'm going to add another row. I want to see the part information, not just the main assembly, but the pieces inside of it. So I'm going to click on row again, go ahead and choose part. Uh, and then I'm going to give it the, the same type of information. I'm going to insert a value field because I want to see the uh, the part position. So I'm going to scroll down here until I find part position. So there it is, part underscore POS. Um, I'm going to maybe add name, just you know, kind of keeping with the theme here. In this case, I'm going to bring just the regular name um, because it doesn't have any sub information. It's just that piece's name, so I'll, um, I can pull a name pretty easily there. And then maybe again do length. Like I said, just kind of keeping with the uh, the general information that we're bringing in here. But we could go on and on with that. Again, I'm going to tighten up the row so that it fits right underneath that. Go ahead and hit save, and we can go back to Tecla and rerun that report. Now. When we, f we look at this, we see that it doesn't really look any different. I'm still seeing all of the assembly information. I'm not seeing any parts. But if I start scrolling down here, um, as we get to the bottom of this list, well, now I'm seeing angles, and I'm seeing rails, and I'm seeing uh, posts and plates. So, so it is listing the parts, but it's listing them all directly after all of the assemblies have been listed. To, to understand why that is, we can see in the tree view, the hierarchy tree over here, that, that the rows are being represented as folders. So you have an assembly folder and you have a part folder in the tree. Notice that they're at the same level. So what happens is when you have your rows at the same level like this, it's going to print all of the first row, so all of the assemblies, and then it's going to print all of the second row, so all of the parts. So that's why it looks the way it does. If I want to get all of the parts per assembly, well then I have to nest that folder under the assembly folder. So we can do that one of two ways. I can either drag and drop to place it under assembly, or you can use the arrow to shift it down a level in that hierarchy, in that tree. So now it's going to list an assembly, and then the parts in that assembly, and then the next assembly, and the parts in that assembly. And you could add bolt rows, weld rows, so you could see bolts per part or welds per part if you wanted to. Um, you can go really crazy with this. But just to, to kind of test our theory here, I'm going to go ahead and save that, go back to my Tecla model and rerun the report. And now we can see that it's, it's stair-stepping, and this is actually because I had offset my piece mark. Um, so I'm listing the assembly, and then the main part of the assembly, because it is a part in its own right, and then the other subparts like plates and whatnot. Um, so your, here's an example of a beam where the B3 beam is 15 foot 7 and 3 quarters long. The main part is still a part, so it's being listed again and then all of the plates on it. So right away we're getting exactly what we were looking for, but let's just say that we, we didn't want to show the main part. Like the main part's kind of assumed. Um, that, now this is going to be different depending on how you like to work, so some people do want to see the main part depending on what you're building. But let's say that we wanted to hide the main part and only see secondary material. In that case, we're going to have to build a rule into this row. Um, the rows can have rules uh, to, to enable them at certain times and disable them at others and do a lot of other really interesting things that will go way beyond a YouTube video and I would definitely recommend coming in for training for that. But just to give you a taste and an introduction, if I were to double click on this row, and open up my row properties, which happen to be on my other screen, uh, we can see there's a content type and then there's a rule field and the rule is currently empty. So I'm going to click on advanced, which enables the, the editing mode for this rule. 
and then I'm going to teach this what I want it to do. So first off, I'm going to put in a structure. This kind of pre-fills it out for me. I'm going to put in a conditional structure, which is an if-then statement. If this condition is true, then do something. If it's not true, then do something else. Um, so what I'm going to check for is, is this row reporting about the main part? So we're going to perform that as a check, and that's going to be a function called get value. I'm checking, I'm pulling, or I'm getting the value of the currently uh, currently selected object or the object currently being reported. So if get value, and then there's a pair of quotes, get value what? What am I getting? Am I getting the name? Am I getting the weight? Am I getting you know some other status? So I'm going to click on this button. You can simply type if you know what the values are. I'm going to click on this button, which opens up the properties of this thing. So what do I want to get? Well, I want to get the main part status. Is this thing a main part? So I'm going to scroll down here until I find main part. Say OK. And then main part, um, you know, you, you wouldn't know this, you know, without looking uh, in our help file, but main part is basically a binary option. One for yes, zero for no. So I'm going to say is the main part or if the main part is equal to one. So that's what the double equal sign is saying is equal to. Then what do I want this row to do? Well, I want this row to be skipped and we call that stepping over. I will step over the row if that's happening. So I'm going to step over the row. If it is not the main part, well, then I want it to be reported. So I'm going to choose output. That's our term for print. So in, in short, I'm saying if the main part is true, if it is a main part, then skip it. Otherwise, print it. Okay. Um, you know, you'll take a little bit of practice until you kind of get that syntax down and, and, and be able to repeat that, but it believe me, it comes easy with time just like anything else. So I'll go ahead and I'll say OK. And by the way, don't, don't also be afraid to go ahead and open up one of our default reports because then you can look at the rules in there and, and kind of deconstruct them and how we put them together. So I'll say OK here, I'll say OK here, and then save my report again. Go back to my Tecla model, say create from all. And now if I scroll down here a little bit so we can see maybe a little bit clear, here I have a B6 beam being called out. As you can see, it's calling out the main assembly. It is not calling out the beam as a part. It's simply calling out um, you know, the, the secondary material. Something that can make these a little bit easier to read, I realize in looking at this, that we might need some spaces. You can use that row buffer to your advantage. So what I might do here is, is put a little buffer above the assembly. And what that's going to do is before it prints a new line for a new assembly, it's going to put that gap in there. Um, let's go ahead and save this and take a look at what that uh, actually looks like in the model. Let's recreate that report. So now you can see it's, it's putting a little space and then A3. And if I scroll down here a little bit further, it's putting a space and then B2. So just a little trick there that you can use to kind of make these easier to see. So, you know, this is obviously a very simple example and I've been moving very quickly, but I hope you find this helpful just to get you, you know, at least introduced to the concepts of the template editor. That way you're not afraid to go ahead and open up one of ours and just kind of start poking around and see what kind of rules there are. Look at the hierarchy trees over here. Look at how we sort things. Um, we do offer training, you know, that goes a lot deeper than I can in videos, like I mentioned. Um, but it's definitely something that you can learn a little bit more about on your own. So we will have some more videos in the future on template editor topics. Um, this was just an introduction. So go ahead and in the comments below if you want to you know, leave some ideas or ask some questions. We'll definitely try to take those into consideration for future videos. Um, as always, thank you for watching. Really appreciate it. Um, and we'll see you next time.